We all know that cars turn corners by the driver turning the front wheels. There are a few vehicles, like forklifts, where the back wheels are turned. Turning the front wheels is far more common because it is far more stable and accurate. Just like pulling a pencil is more stable and accurate than pushing it. But how does steering work? In very rudimentary vehicles, there may be no steering at all. And the only way for the car to be turned is for the front wheels to be dragged across the ground. This relies on skidding and slippage and a turning force outside the vehicle to be applied. It's not a, not a great solution. The simplest kind of steering mechanism is sometimes called turntable steering. There is a single pivot in the center of the vehicle. By rotating the front axle, uh, both axles are pointing towards a common point, the front axle and the rear axle. Each wheel travels around in a circuit with a common center, even if they have different radii. This removes the need for side slip or skidding, and each wheel is independently freewheeling. So the differences in the circumferences of the turning circles is compensated for by each wheel having a slightly different rate of rotation or spin. This is a pretty good solution, but has three main problems. Firstly, the axle has to swing through large arcs, even for minor turns. And this requires lots of space beneath the vehicle to be available, space which is often not available. And secondly, the central pivot is a single point of stress and failure and makes the addition of any kind of suspension difficult. Thirdly, the long axle amplifies even small bumps in the road. In simple steering, each wheel is given its own pivot, but turns through exactly the same angle. Now this solves some of the problems above with turntable steering, but we get the return of the side slip issue. It's certainly better than a totally fixed front axle, which requires a lot of side slip, but by turning both wheels through the same angle, we can see that each of the front wheels has a different center of rotation. Now the ideal solution would be for each front wheel to be independently steerable. Just imagine two steering wheels in your car. Now in this way, each could be set to the perfect angle to make a tangent to the circular arc with a common center. And this is what it would look like. Now we could use simple trigonometry to determine what the ideal turning angles for the inner wheel and the outer wheel are. And it turns out that these angles are dependent on L, which is the length of the wheel base of the vehicle, in other words, the distance between the two axles, T, which is the track or the distance between the center line of each tire, and R, which is the radius of the turn as experienced by the center line of the vehicle. In other words, it's the degree through which you turn the vehicle. We can see that the inside wheel turns through a slightly larger angle than the outside wheel. This is how ideal steering compares to simple steering. We can see that through very small angles of turn, simple steering is fairly good, but as the angle or the turn becomes greater, so simple steering becomes a worse and worse solution. The best solution that approximates the ideal, where you don't need to have two steering wheels, is often referred to as Ackerman steering. In Ackerman steering, each wheel is given its own pivot, which is typically close to the hub of the wheel, and uh, tie rods create a trapezium shape with two additional pivots. Now with this shape, as the inside wheel turns, the outside wheel turns at a slightly different, lesser rate. By adjusting the geometry, the length of the tie rods and the angle they form with the straight ahead, the relative rotations of the wheels can be changed. The closer the geometry gets to creating a rectangle, however, 
the closer the steering mechanism gets to simple steering. Now here we can see a comparison of simple steering, Ackerman steering, and ideal steering. And we can see that Ackerman steering is a far better approximation of ideal steering through a greater range of turning circles. But as the turning circle gets bigger, so Ackerman steering becomes less of a good approximation to ideal steering. So look carefully at production cars you see on the road. Invariably you're going to see that when they turn, the wheels do not turn at the same angle because they are employing a form of Ackerman steering geometry. Here we can see an Ackerman steering geometry in action. Here is the trapezium shape. Notice how the wheels turn through slightly different angles as the car turns to the left. We can see that the inside wheel turns through a slightly larger angle than the outside wheel. And this means that all four wheels of the car have exactly the same center of rotation through the cornering. Now, your eco vehicles do not have Ackerman steering. The steering geometry is closer to being a simple steering design. It turns out that the smaller the track width or the distance between the midpoints of the wheels, the less the difference between the turning angles of each front wheel becomes. And your eco vehicles have a very small track width. Think of it this way. The smaller the track width, the more your four-wheeled vehicle resembles a two-wheeled vehicle like a motorbike or a bicycle. Because implementing an Ackerman steering system is quite difficult and expensive, the decision was taken that the effort and expense required did not justify the gains in steering performance. The benefit is a simplified design with less that can break or that needs to be adjusted.